I don't want to listen to his podcast, huh? Dude, it's educational. And besides, I've been wanting to listen to this one. Welcome to Idling in the Impala, a podcast by and for lovers of Supernatural and the fan fiction it inspires. Before we begin, just want to remind you to like, subscribe, and follow wherever you listen to us so you don't miss any episodes or bonus stuff that we do. I'm Sandra. I'm Carly. And we thought we've done quite a few serious episodes. You know, we did the Winchesters. We did the ending of Supernatural. We did the sexual assault thing. And we were like, yeah, you know what? We should Mm -hmm. lighten it up a little bit. It's getting a bit too serious up in here. Mm -hmm. So we thought we would take a look at some of the comic relief characters (laughs) that are present in Supernatural. They say as they start scrolling endlessly down the meeting notes there we go i don't know why i scrolled up it's not even my intro i don't have to say anything but i did so yeah we thought we'd just take a look at some of the characters we thought you know were primarily for comic relief a lot of them have really tragic fucking endings because it's supernatural it's supernatural (laughs) we knew it wouldn't end happily so yeah but we're not we're not going to focus on the ending we're just going to focus on the levity that they brought to some of some of the show. So or we have a why list. Why they were you... initially, right? Like why they were initially kind yeah. of brought in. Or you can just kind of see from the way the character was portrayed. Yeah, we have a long list. Mm-hmm. I went through I went through the um the wiki and I was like reminding myself of some of the characters that we've been introduced to over the 15 years and added to our short list on the meeting notes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's it's not, it's not a short list anymore. Do you want to just go down by 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 by, by the list? I think so because no. I feel like whoever we came up with first was like an immediate like oh you know yeah, yeah that person. So the first person on the list is Gabriel. I think maybe we thought I think I maybe thought the trickster more than Gabriel because we're not talking about Gabriel at the end of the show. We're talking about like the early iterations. Mm-hmm. He was still pretending to be um, Loki, the trickster. And things mm-hmm. like that. So mm-hmm. I'm thinking, especially, you know, Tall Tales, Mystery Spot. Yes. Mystery Spot, changing channels. Mm-hmm. Changing channels. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I think he was, so these were early seasons. So we were still, we were still settling in to what the show really was. And I do think he brought a real sense of, because it was quite you know, like season two, season three. Oh, Sam's gonna go dark side. Yeah, it needed something to to bolster it. It was a little all broody. Bit. Yeah, it was all very broody yeah. for a while. Tall Tales was the first one I really think of. Like, oh, what are they doing? They're doing something different with this episode. Yes. You know, and then I think, I think they kind of felt that they could do that going forward because I think, I think Hollywood Babylon. It was in season two, and like that was when they were like on set, and I feel like that might that might have been after. And now I've got to like probably look at the list at some point to see the the order. But I feel like those those two were probably lighter parts of season yeah. two, and that was like the first kind of real instance of that. Well, you know what? Oh my gosh, I forgot another. I forgot poor characters that you probably won't like. I'm just thinking about them. Oh yay! Putting them in oh right fuck now. off! Because I think they're funny. I know you don't. We'll get to I them. I don't. We'll get to them. We'll get to them. <laughs> so yes, Gabriel. I, yeah, yeah. And Trickster. Gabriel, Gabriel mm-hmm. the Trickster. And you all know I don't like Mystery Spot. It's funny, but I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it because it made Jared sad. He's like, I had to be sad for a week. Bullshit. I don't like Mystery Spot. You, you may recall, your bottom is my top. It mm-hmm. was my, it was, it was my like, I think, I don't think it was like my number one hated episode, but it was definitely in my bottom 10. Yeah. And it was Sandra's like top episode. Yeah. Uh, but changing channels is is one of my favorites. I really I really like that, and I mm-hmm. think changing channels is like they're all building up, and I think that's the peak because you don't you don't know who what is going on mm-hmm. in Tall Tales, and then with Mystery Spot again, you you know it's the trickster, but it's it it's funny but kind of like dark and then like it it ends quite well it doesn't end quite dark it goes really dark before it ends Mm -hmm. whereas changing channels is just like ah yes the trickster's fucking with us again Mm -hmm. brilliant Mm -hmm. now what you know and i like that i like the sound parlor i i I do really like the sound parlor (laughs) 
you know, um, I like I like the fact that Dean knows that it's not Dr. Sexy because he's not wearing cowboy boots. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I like the story that goes behind the Japanese game show yeah. of them show, showing Jared and Jensen what the, the machine would do. Mm-hmm. And Jensen being like, what if it just bends a little, though? You know? <laughs> <laughs> and poor Jared being like, well, what if it bends a little? <laughs> I do. I love all of that. And I think Gabriel as the Archangel was a, it was a bit more of a darker supernatural storyline but the trickster was you know that was that was good times but richard spade did a good job with gabriel as the character too like transitioning him into he was still when he did come in even if it was really like really i think like the darkest episodes with him was when he came back and he had been oh, as Medea. So yeah open. but then yeah. so i think those two were really dark but then like when he comes back again there's that um, wisecracking you know part of him that you're used to seeing when he was the trickster you know and then you get to see how he might have fit in with the dynamics of his brothers you know like in that mm-hmm. in that situation mm-hmm. like I feel like he was like the one that would try to wanted to keep things light and just couldn't you know like couldn't get away from all the drama and he was just like, well, I'm just going to leave then, you know, because yeah. I've, I'm done with it. So yeah, I really like initially, like just all that, that trickster character opened up possibility wise on the show like, definitely lent itself to some really, really mm-hmm. funny, funny moments for the boys to, you know, by, by extension yeah. of him. It was, that was one of it. I think that character is one of the first characters that was like playing around with them. Mm-hmm. As opposed to it being like a real life or death situation. Yeah. He was fucking with them. Yeah. And of yeah. course, if we're talking about the trickster Gabriel, we we can't forget Casa Erotica. Mm-hmm. You know, we can't forget you're my brother, but you're a, a great big bag of dicks. Mm-hmm. Um but there was another one as well. That you've forgotten. <laughs> uh, that I've I've forgotten. Uh, Rowena. Rowena in the library. Yeah. Later on. Yeah. Rowena. Uh-huh. And the the great the fucking grace in the pot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was just as 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 serious as the, the storyline of Gabriel could be. He didn't take himself seriously. Yeah, and I enjoyed that. Yeah, and I we've we've said it about a lot of the characters we've done a deeper dive into. I don't think you could have got anyone better than Richard Spate mm-hmm. to play that mm-hmm. character. Yeah. And it's actually it's it's worth noting as well. One of the other characters on the list, uh, Sully, which we'll get to in a minute, Richard Spate Jr. directed that episode mm-hmm. as well, which is probably mm-hmm. why it's so funny. Yeah, yeah, like it's really episode. good. It's really good. Yeah. So, yeah, comic relief. Got to start with Gabriel. Moving on down the list, we've got Ash. I fucking, I, I love Ash. I love, I love Ash. I love the way he interacts with them and the way he's just... A, a bit a bit like the trickster, just no fucks given. He's unapologetic you know? in how he is, which is fun. I've just started rewatching season two, so I think I've just been reintroduced to him and I'm reminded he's only in a handful of episodes and it's still just he makes such a such an impression. And I think he makes such an impression on the boys too, you know, because immediately you're given this mullet, you know, drunk who just hangs out um at the roadhouse. But then you're, you know, you find out how very smart and intelligent he is and how he's able to assist the boys, um, you know, in their, their search for, you know, like Mm -hmm. um, the, the demon and tracking down all of that stuff. And he's just so funny. He's very funny with Dean. They have some really good, like back and forth banner um, with him. And a lot of it is just, a lot of it's not even dialogue it's just like the looks that they give each other like when dean's about ready yeah. to go onto the touches computer and he's like you know and then ash is just like you know and dean's like okay no oh great all right i won't i won't be doing yeah. that he's like yeah no don't don't do that yeah business in the yeah. front party in the back it's just he's so great it's so they had so many opportunities for certain characters and then they just like you know got rid of them way too soon i think ash ash is probably one of the ones the most that i'm like you could have done 
he could have done they could have done more with a him. A fun little yeah. every once in a while toss him in. And I think they realized that that they needed that and that they got rid of it too soon. You know, so I think they had to use other characters, I think, mm-hmm. to help in that regard. Yeah, he's so funny. Yeah. Yeah. And the the th- the thing in heaven with the um mm-hmm. the cape and mm-hmm. the like um the luchador i think it is yeah i think um, so yeah wrestling mask mm-hmm. he's just it, he it, he deserved better like like a lot of characters in supernatural <laughs> he deserved better um but he was you know i think if they'd have kept him around he could have you know i think he would have really bonded with sam over the advancing technology as we <laughs> moved from 2005 up to um you know like 20 2020 yeah. and stuff and he would have been and could you imagine like if he'd ever like had the chance to like interact with charlie or you know like stuff like that oh, like yeah. that could have been so so perfect you know just seeing that those dynamics work yeah. with each other would have been great yeah yeah but we we do love ash um and obviously shout out to chad limberg who plays ash and again i don't I don't know that there's anybody else. <laughs> I, you couldn't like so many lightning in a bottle moments of supernatural. There's no, there's nobody that I mm-hmm. look at the character and think, oh, so and so would have done that better. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. And I, yeah. I, I do like that. Absolutely. So, coming down next on the list is Sully, whose episode I forget, but I'm sure Sandra knows. Just my imagination. There we go. Here I knew you'd know. Uh, yep, so directed by Rich Spate, but also Sully was great. He was I, that epi- that episode was fun and funny with the whole like <laughs> all the sparkly blood and gall. And that's the, the that best poor scene. That's like one of the top ten scenes to me is yeah. him interacting with the boys and looking at the crime scene and then <laughs> yeah. them trying to work on like pulling it back and stuff and then um, the mom coming in. Yeah, that's that's just comedy gold. Like they did such a great job with that. They really, really did. That was that was yeah. great. And the whole, I think too, like comic relief, but then the warmth of the character and how very odd the scenario is when you really think about it. Like you know these these adult like creatures, like and how they they interact with kids, but like you make it fun and you know, innocent in a way that's really sweet. And mm-hmm. yeah, I, I just, I think I'm always going to have like a, a soft spot too for that now that we, um, when Ted and I were able to go to the one con and Nate Torrance, who plays Sully, was there, you know, we were able to do like um, a photo op with it's him. It's a great photo with and him. The mom. And, you know, I, I, I was able to get him to sign a little book that I had used as a prop and stuff. And just how very impactful, I think it shows one character can be on a show that so many people still reference him yeah you know and i think would have loved to see him again but i think they realized you know it wasn't necessary just so funny. yeah and it's we we want to we do want to stay within the you know the comic levity but i just think there's a lot of power in sully being especially so late in the show and the boys have just accepted that their lives are just going to suck and mm-hmm. these things are going to be piled on them. Mm-hmm. And to know that Sam had someone when he was a kid telling mm-hmm. him that it was it was okay to be who he was. Yeah. And then, you know, following up in that episode, telling Sam, well, both of them, that it's it's okay to be scared still and that they can do the thing. And I think sometimes you need that. Yeah. Sometimes you just, you need somebody to tell you that it's okay to feel how you feel but yeah. it's gonna be okay and also all the banter between sully and dean and i'm pretty sure that's the episode where he's like i'm gonna get my gun yeah and like he goes to walk out of the kitchen mm-hmm. yeah yeah plus and i sully think it's appearing important. with all the yeah. sweets and mm-hmm. things it's yeah great. yeah i think it's important too like to remember how much like we talk about the impact that you know he had on sam but the comic relief that I think he provided Sam in canon too, like, you know, being his buddy and letting him be a kid, I think was important and how he was able to do that in a fun way. Like, I think he brought, he brought the imagination and fun out of Sam, you know, and, and helped him, helped him that way. And that's, you know, as, as Xana, you know, that's kind of their job, but I think, yeah, just did a great, great portrayal of that, of that character. 
for, oh, for the yeah. audience as, well was... as for the characters themselves. Yeah, it was a good a good example of an imaginary friend that I think a lot of us probably could can relate to as adults as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Thinking, you know, how nice that would be. And the flashbacks with Sam and I, I think I think it was Colin I think it was Colin playing young Sam and no, it was a different nice. different one at that no, point. I think was Colin, was, Colin was too old at that point. Yeah, Colin Ford. Yeah, mm. he would have been too old. Yeah. Let's see who it was then. Uh, characters. Yeah, I think the last time we see Colin Ford play Sam is in like season eight. And by then he's like a teenager and you could see how tall he's getting and shooting up and he's a little gangly. Yeah, so he would have been way too old <laughs> to play. Okay. <laughs> okay that that's point. fine yeah um it doesn't tell me this particular wiki mm. doesn't tell me who is playing um baby I remember big eyes very big eyes big eyed little little munchkin yeah yeah let me go to let me go to uh if i go to um no it wasn't it was dylan kingwell okay in that episode mm-hmm. so let me see if i can find a picture Oh, and Dylan Everett had a little spot as Dean, so there were two Dylans. Cute. Playing. Ah, oh, that's Dean. nice. Okay, then. <laughs> so, yeah, Sully. We love Sully. Uh, next on the list, Garth. Now, I don't think Garth, I think you wouldn't have got a lot of the comedy that you get from Garth if anyone else had be cast to play him. But yeah. DJ Qualls knows his niche. Mm-hmm. He just knows he knows his niche. He knows his skills inside out and backwards. Mm-hmm. So you get a lot out, lot more out of a character than I think you would have done with anybody else. Yeah. And I am a huge, huge fan of the fact that it's it's little Garth. You know, it's DJ Qualls. He weighs about a hundred pounds soaking wet, mm-hmm. and he's a werewolf. Ted and I can't take him seriously as a werewolf. Like we just laugh every time. Like no. you know, his, his his teeth come out. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, Garth, no. It's just not oh, going to work. Baby, no. Like, you know, I mean, I could see him as being like, you know, a very competent and good hunter, but for some reason it's like the the werewolf thing when they, and again, that could just be prosthetics no, and see, really bad makeup, but it just, it's, it's hard to, it's hard to take him seriously when he growls at anybody. It's just, it's just too, he's oh, just too just, sweet. He's too sweet. He's just little. I yeah. love him. Mm-hmm. And he's such an incredible, incredible actor. Mm-hmm. And he brings all of that. And I love the fact that he's, you know he's he he does look sweet and soft, but I'm thinking when he really hauls off on Dean about Dean and Sam weren't the only ones that loved Bobby. Yeah. Afterwards, yeah. and he's he's got grit in him, and I yeah. love that. Yeah. And I am a huge fan of the twins. This is Sam. This is Castiel. Yes, yeah. I still I get that. like. <laughs> I still like I'm I always wonder like what was the point? Was it just a bug dean or did he really like not yes. want to okay because I'm just like it, no, it's, it's it it's it's I it's think it was weird. Bug dean. <laughs> I think it was I think it like it was weird, but this the way it's set up for Dean to be like, and this must be Castiel. Yeah. I love yeah. It. And just the hugging, like he's, is, he's such a hugger, and you know, it's like he's a hugger. They, yeah. Yeah, and they the the way they incorporate him and how genuine he is but just very like you know just he's goofy but he embraces it and it's all like him and no apologies kind of thing uh I yeah. I, I really like that about that character I also wonder because normally a writer will kind of be in charge of like certain characters or introducing them and I I don't know who it was that kind of like started Garth out, you know, like writing for him. I also wonder, like, was the plan to have him sort of be that substitute for Bobby? Because he shows up in season seven, I think a few episodes before Bobby, you know, is kind of gone. He shows up first in time for a wedding, I think. Yeah. And that's like a few episodes before Bobby dies. Yeah. His... I. It, my my interpretation of that is he is diametrically opposed, a diametrically opposite to Jared. Jared mm-hmm. is tall and bulky, and mm-hmm. DJ is small and skinny. And I I think it was supposed to just be a comedic thing mm-hmm. to give Dean a partner who is so completely opposite to what he's used to, mm-hmm. and make him work with that. I, I love how I love, I, I love so the dynamic. Though. I love the fact that on screen, like he's got like 
with him and Dean is explored more, but then you know off you know. screen that he hung out a lot with Jared. And so he has like more of a like DJ's more like Jared besties and stuff and like, you know, knows Jared better than Jensen. But on on screen it's like, you know, Dean and and he have a lot of interaction, I think, more than he and Sam do. Again, which is like Sam and Cass, really? <laughs> Yeah. Okay, All right. Okay, mm. we'll go for that. He is. He's tall. He's like six foot. I'm seeing a six six and a quarter. He's okay. 183. Okay, so almost as tall so, as Jensen. Yeah, he's tall. Yeah. yeah, almost as tall as Jensen. Jim Jeffries, the comedian, just released a new special, and in this special, he he doesn't out DJ because DJ had already come out, mm-hmm. but he makes reference to the fact that DJ came out as gay mm. at one of. Jim's shows. Jim was telling an anecdote about them going to see Elton John. He didn't name DJ in this anecdote because he didn't want to out him, but DJ mm-hmm. was at the show backstage. And he's like, and he just walked on stage, took the mic off me and went, that was me. <laughs> and gave the mic back and left. Oh, and oh I was, gosh. I had to, I had to Google this because mm-hmm. I was like, has he been out as gay forever? And I just didn't know. But mm-hmm. it turns out, no, he came okay. out in like 2020. Okay. But yeah. Okay. He just he just seems to have a lot of just be be in a lot of circles. He seems to be a genuinely yeah, yeah. very likable human being. Yeah, yeah. And we we do like him. Yeah, he's very even fun. though if he came he's out, he's fun at the tomorrow, cons. He's fun at the cons. Is he good? Yeah, he's very, yeah. he's great. He does this. Um, he's actually hosting. He's the one that hosts karaoke now, and he's he's turned it into like a theme thing where like you know he'll tell people like what the oh, theme cool. is. And he expects people to dress up and stuff and do that. So he's really into it. He's really into it. He's a, he's a great. He's a great fan fan proponent, I think, which is really lovely, lovely to see. Yeah, so, yeah. Oh, I love that. Mm-hmm. Now, DJ DJ is good people. We like mm-hmm. DJ. He's good people. He's like forty four as well, which is that's wild to me. Mm-hmm. He still looks like like he's in his twenties. You know, <laughs> he's a small muffin. <laughs> we moving got... on from Gaff. One of our favorites. You want to do that? You want to take this one? I mean, I can start it, but I know you'll 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 take it from there. It's just basically Charlie, Charlie Bradbury. Yeah. Her initial I find it interesting too that like a lot of characters that I found were very comic relief showed up in season seven, like Garth, Charlie, and then another person later mm-hmm. on that I kind of felt um added to the lightness or potential lightness of of an episode and the characters having somebody to work off of in a way that didn't always drag them down. And I don't know if that was like, uh, you know, a choice by the creators intentionally, or if it just kind of happened that way that they needed to maybe fill up the void too of a character when he was gone. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they had to come up with some other people. Yeah. Uh, Charlie Bradbury, techie genius who just has a zingers and is just like Amazing. ball of sunshine. And I think it's just so very fun yeah. and light in and we're we're not going to touch on what happened to Charlie at the end. Mm-hmm. We're going to remember her as her fabulous, fabulous self. And yeah. when I think of Charlie, I always think of her dancing in the elevator. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. To, that's one of the that's headphone. one of the best introductions I think of a character. You know, they've they've had a few like that, but she's you just immediately know from the start. You know, and then she's just like, like stick straight once the doors open, and she's just you know she's yeah. she's she's ready to to get to work. But you know, then like has like, you know, hooked up with somebody at a charity dinner and stuff like that. And you just get all of this great, this great stuff about her. And yeah, like LARP and the Real Girl, that episode, which was hysterical, you know, wouldn't yes. have been possible, I think, without her character. The Pac-Man Fever one, which is also heavy, but still, you know, gives them the opportunity to go into this dream state and it, it becomes heavy, but it's, it, again, with these types of characters open up the world a little bit more in their comedy and that's that's really important and she's just a great character like comic relief aside she's a great character with a lot of depth and works really well with both of them i think with sam mm-hmm. and dean so yeah 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 this the way the way dean is with her uh, is just so so nice mm-hmm. cuz she's so little mm-hmm. and we very rarely see him either of them really be like physically affectionate with anybody mm-hmm. but like when they're like physically affectionate with Cass he's he's a big guy that's like mm-hmm. their size 
she's tiny. Yeah. And I love that. And I also, apart from the elevator scene, my favorite ever like Charlie scene is um she's got that she's got that iPad or like um surface or whatever it is and she's telling Dean that it does fucking everything and you know a cup of tea at the end and Sam's like I hate that thing but I want one, I want one. <laughs> yeah <laughs> so her little like her little like like nerd off mm-hmm. between Sam you know because he's the tech guy and she's the tech guy and I love that. But then and he's got the journal, right? And then so she's, and then she, she gets to say the same thing to him, like, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. And she's just, she's so great. She's one of the very few women that was allowed, you know, an arc of sorts in Supernatural. Um, you know, we we we're gonna discuss Charlie in a different light for mm-hmm. for another one of these episodes, but uh, she was they could have done a whole lot more with her. Yeah. And I think she was on dirty in the end, but she was amazing. Yeah. yeah, All of the time. Absolutely. So the next one. We as fans, we have, we as fans call them the rich chesters, but I believe Jared and Jensen don't know what that is. (laughs) I think they have a different name for them. (laughs) My brain is saying it was the dude. I believe it was. Do they call them hunter chesters? Okay, okay. No, it was it was like you know, like we're not the loose chesters. The deuce chesters. They were deuce chesters. Maybe, yeah. Because I I can remember at a con somebody asking them something about the rich chesters, and they were like, like "Who?" <laughs> yeah. Oh no, we don't we don't call them that. Um, <laughs> I genuinely I will have to hold my hands and say I do not see the point of them. I don't know why they were there. It was very fucking weird. It was towards the end of the show where the writing was crazy. But I, no, I think I it literally them. was just an opportunity that they just went for. And really, you could say they were literally only there for comic relief in that one yes. episode. Like, that was it. So true comic and, relief characters was just getting um, Jared and Jensen the chance to play the exact opposite so. of, you know, our Sam and Dean um, yep. that way. And they did they did a really good job. They did a good job with um, them. Unfortunately, my favorite thing about the um, Rich Chesters is the blooper where Jensen falls off the chair <laughs> and Sam just fucking Jared doesn't move. <laughs> just uh, looks at, it's just like, oh, well, whoops. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I like the man bun. I, I like the expression on. Oh, I hated that. No, no. I, I liked hate. his expression, though, like when he was, when, when Sam was like, you're going to have to get rid of that. And he was just like clutching his pearls at that. Like, how dare you? Yeah. Like, no. And like, even like, a hey, Dean was like, oh, <gasps> like, what? yes. Don't you dare? Don't you dare even like? How how dare you? How dare you? That how was funny. It's a funny bit. Funny bit. Yeah, yeah. They were they were they were good good people, and I think it was good to see Jared and Jensen be able to play different versions of sam and dean together Uh because it's been like you know possessed sam soulless Mm -hmm. sam Mm -hmm. um you know demon dean michael dean but nothing light together yeah 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 so to to watch them play a different sam and dean together Mm -hmm. and watch them riff off each other in a different way Mm -hmm. because the the AU Sam and Dean had a very different relationship to our Sam and Dean. Yeah. yeah. And that was fun. But unfortunately, it, it still is Jensen falling off the chair. <laughs> Jared just being like, oh, oh no. <laughs> not even making a move. Making a move. Oh, okay. I'm not doing the next one on the list because I don't think these fuckers are funny. Okay. And I do. You can do and, this one. And my husband does. But, and I know, I know a lot of people don't, don't find them funny. But um, we watched. We watched season one again and the episode Hell House, which introduced us to, at that point, they were not the ghost fe- ghost facers. It was Hellhound's lair. Um, yeah. But uh, Harry and Ed, I think, or, but I, I think it's like, I think it's Harry and Ed. I just know them it's as ghost facers. Somebody. I really liked, I really like how different they are from Sam and Dean and like their bravado and thinking they know everything and they don't. And how just bumbling idiots they are. I liked that. And I liked the, um, like, I'm looking forward to the season three episode, which I think was Ghost Facers. Um, I think it's called Ghost Facers. 
just because it that is. gives um it gives a little more background to the characters and how just how ridiculous they are and even the people around them knowing how ridiculous they are even though they're a part of like their whole routine and reality kind of show thing but then also like how again all of these characters give Sam and Dean an opportunity to work off of them and I think it's just it's great to see Sam and Dean just not take them seriously at all in any way shape or form and but how they come back in little cameos like I think they come back in season four um it's terrible life where they do AU Sam and Dean are looking up ghost stuff and it's like they come up with they they come across the ghost facers and you know it's just like the the little little interjections of them popping into their lives and like how Sam and Dean are just like so beyond like over it like why are these guys getting all like not that they want the limelight but they just don't understand (laughs) they just keep managing to do the stuff that they do. I think one of my least favorite episodes of the show though was like the final episode that you see them in because it parallels, I think it's called Thin Man. It parallels them so very obviously with whatever's going on with Sam and Dean at the time. Yes. That I just, I didn't like that. You know, I didn't like their dynamic anymore at that point because then you you kind of got to see how, you know, one person was kind of like just taking control over another and not making decisions that really weren't talked about. And again, I know it's supposed to par- parallel what's going on with the boys, but I didn't like that episode, but I like, you know, again, I just like the little, the way they're brought up again and again, like, you know, and it's not, it's not a hit you over the head. And I don't think they needed to be around any more than they were. I just liked when they did, when they did pop up. And I think even the ghost facers episode was, they were even like talking about the whole writer strike and stuff and how like, you know, it had to be a thing that they had to come up with. I don't know if they came up with it quick because of that, but I think there was probably, I'm sure there's a lot of improvisation too that happens with those with those actors. They seem very good at that. And they seem mm. good at it with Jared and Jensen. So yeah, yeah. I, I like them. I find them funny. I find them the good, like injecting some levity. I think maybe when you need it, maybe through the course of a season and then, you know, they're out and done and you don't have to think about them again until they pop in again. So yeah, I like them. Yeah. I think they're I think I just, they're fun comic relief. I know. I know a lot of people don't. And that's a, that's perfectly fine. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I can see why they're funny. I think, do you know what I think a lot of it is for me? A lot of their episodes are like found footage and they make me feel mm-hmm. sick. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I'm especially just, the Ghost Facers one is very like herky-jerky yeah. and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Ugh. Yeah, no, I get you know? that. Mm-hmm. So it, it could be, it could be that. Next on down the list is Pamela, Pamela Barnes. Uh, we talked about Pamela in um, It's Not Sexual Assault If It's Against a Man. Yeah. But all of that aside, Pamela is very good. Pamela is very funny. Yeah. Her sexual <laughs> Again, harassment is funny <laughs> to me. I know it's bad, but like it's, the way the way uh, she the way she her 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 delivery, um, like she seems to pop into the handful of episodes that she popped into, it felt like when she came in, she just like lightened the mood substantially. Yes. Or like even if she was there to help, she she brought some fun to it, you know, um, in a way. Mm-hmm. So I I like that about her, about her character. She doesn't take herself too seriously. Like the woman no, lost she her doesn't. eyesight and she still didn't take herself too seriously. So I feel like that that levity is very apparent in her. And even like when she comes back in season 14 in one of my favorite episodes ever, the nihilism episode where they're in Dean's brain. Again, she's in there and you could tell she's in there to make Dean feel good. Like, so she's got that feel yeah. good, feel goodness about her as a character that I think is, you just feel it right away, even though, you know, she's feeling yeah. up the boys and shouldn't be doing that, but she's, She's she should not levity. Do not do she's this, levity. Pamela. Yeah, yeah. Again, she stars in one of my favorite bloopers from that episode with Jared. I need new underwear. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's all I will say about that one. But it, it's it's the way it's the way the cats, um, the Misha and Jensen are like fucking really, and she just cracks up and loses mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. I I enjoy that because yeah. obviously they're used to Jared being gross mm-hmm. and she just fucking loses it. It's, 
that a lot of these were like, yeah, no, they're really funny in the show. And I'm like, but have you seen the blue pool? Where? Uh, yeah, yeah. You seen the blue pool? Where? Yeah, no, it's again one of my favorites. So bad Pamela, keep your hands to yourself, <laughs> but also keep not taking yourself too seriously because we we like that. Oh goodness. So next one down on the list is Frank Devereaux. Um, he's the nut job that um <laughs> helps Sam and Dean in season seven. Yeah, like go undercover, um, like lose their identities yeah. and all that stuff. He's only in I think he only shows up in like two episodes, but like they they have those things where like they'll call him up and like you can tell he's supposed to be on the other end of the line or whatever. And he's he's just so crazy, but the actor, and I don't know the actor's name that plays him, but felt like he just did such a great job with the character oh, yeah. that um I wanted to wanted to put him in there. It's he he's a character where the way they ended it, you didn't really know whether or not, you know, they if they don't show you the body, you just don't know, you know, whether or not he's ever going to show up. And I think he was one of those characters I hoped would show up again, but just never did. Never did. Yeah. Um he was played by Kevin uh McNally. Mm, really good that really good actor accent. just the way he like yes the way he just put like sam and dean in their place too just so quickly it was it was beautiful to watch it was so funny it was so funny um yeah and i think there's a he, i think there might be a blooper or two with him as well that's really really funny like in character like he he just plays it up and does and does a good job um yeah with jared and jensen yeah, no, he was he was really good. And I love I love the way that they were like, yeah, no, they're, they're monsters. And he's like, government clones. That's what they are. <laughs> like, he was fully willing to buy into the fact that there were people out there masquerading as Sam and Dean, but mm-hmm. he would not buy into the fact they were monsters. He was like, mm-hmm. nope, government. He was just, <laughs> yeah. He was it it was it was what the CGI, I mean the Leviathans were dumb anyway. No, the they, they had alone. so much potential though like that's the one yeah. thing i always hate about that season yeah mm-hmm. but it was like you know this was they'd really what do you think you're coming off like season season five with lucifer mm-hmm. and i can't remember what the big bad of season six was solar sam maybe it was solar sam um, but then it was the fact that um heaven and oh, it was opening and Crowley, purgatory, wasn't yeah it? yeah and yeah the purgatory thing mm-hmm. so and it was like it was just it was like a real big step up mm-hmm. to season seven from all the all the bads that we'd had before. And then here suddenly we've got like an organized unit that have got a plan that's gonna turn us into fucking like mulch for them, whatever. Mm-hmm. You know. And I it it had the potential to be really quite heavy. Mm-hmm. And then they bring in this absolute nutcase mm-hmm. mm-hmm. and make him the authority on it. Yeah. And it was yeah. You know, it was it was it was great. I am, um, I'm a fan. Yeah, yeah, a fan of Frank. And again, season seven, like you know, he shows up in season seven, and I felt like, I feel like season seven was just like they just tried everything in season seven, and they they really did have so many characters that they introduced that you kind of wish yeah. had st- had stuck around um, a lot longer than they did. And yeah. then, and then Donna, 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 Donna is. Fucking great D train. I love Donna with the, the fire of a thousand fucking sons. By yeah. God, I love Donna. Yeah. If there is a canonical ship, as in we are solely playing in canon with heterosexual Sam and Dean, Dean and Donna yeah. is my one true pairing. That's I fucking fully agree. Yeah. That would have been her. great. And she's great. And you know good. what? One of my favorite Donna scenes is a fucking blooper as well. <laughs> is it the donut? The compa- yeah, the compare of eating scene. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And Jez is just like... <laughs> <laughs> fucking sugar all over his face. Because <sighs> it's the way she tries really hard to carry on and she cracks up mm-hmm. and then he just falls about laughing. I just love the fact that they have fun. Yeah. I like people that, that have fun with them. Yeah, and I but feel like she, I mean, I think when they brought her on, there there wasn't the expectation she was going to become a recurring character. But then again, I think, you know. Well, it, she was on before. She was like in just the one fair episode and then they brought the character back because she was in the episode with the. She was the in the purge. Yeah, monsters the purge. at the spa. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Is that what it was? That was the donut. I, I yeah. remember it as the. <laughs> yep. No, she was in a. That was that was the donuts. That no, was the don- she... the first time you you meet her. It's the donut scene, and then transfers over but to she's she in ends the spa. up being at the, yeah because she was on vacation after that, and he um, they find her at the at the spa. Oh, yep. I thought the donut scene was in a different. Um, no, that's why it's so great. Is that they like that's initially like their first. I'm, I mean, I'm, I don't know if it was their first scene that they recorded together, but like you know, it's the first scene that you see Donna and yeah. Yeah. I, th- I, I stand corrected. I thought they were different episodes, but um, then I think the no, next she- time she comes on is Hibbing, right? Hibbing 911. And that I think is uh, in season 10. I'm going to look. I'm going to look now. Mm, don't know. They don't bring her back for a while. We're I don't so think. prepared. So prepared. So prepared. Yeah, she was in the purge, and then it was Hibbing nine one one. That's where her um, her little niece gets kidnapped, isn't it? No, no Hibbing nine one one is when she first meets. Jody. Oh no, it's with just part part yeah. of Jody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I think that doesn't happen until like season thirteen, or maybe it's season eleven. No, it's season season thirteen with the with the niece getting. Um, yeah, and again, like I think just like every other great character, like she's just given the longer you're with them, you get more of the, uh, the drama and a little bit of the tragedy behind the character, but she's just so, she's so sweet and funny. And, you know, her, her mannerism, her sayings, she's just, Mm. she's just great. She's just a great character. Brianna Buckmaster did a, wonderfully amazing job with with that character the fact that a heterosexual female was allowed to stay on as long <laughs> yeah <laughs> as she, she lives could. yeah she lives it says yeah. a lot about the character too you know um yeah she's really good really good i would i would also add she's not she's not here on the list but i would add jody also has her moments of comic relief she does she, she feels like a more she feels like a more serious character to me too, though. Like, I, I feel like Donna kind yeah. of just runs into it and you're just like, you know, you know, you're in for a laugh where Jody, I think gets a lot of, um, yeah, I am, I've got to say it. I am specifically thinking of when Jody has Claire and Alex mm-hmm. and they're around mm-hmm. the dinner table with Sam scene. and Dean and, she, yeah. and she's like, Oh no, you will help me. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Help you God. And they're like, we're just going to go mm-hmm. sit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But she, yeah, I agree with you. She's she's a more serious character, um, in yeah. a way that Kim Rhodes definitely is not. Kim Rhodes is amazing. Yeah, yeah. Donna is fab. So we're we're trawling down the list. We're trying to not make this massively long. <laughs> uh, Donatello Redfield, who was the prophet, which was from season. Well, he he shows up in season eleven, and then like becomes like the prophet like through subsequent seasons, um, and he's just but played by. He's... I can't, the actor's name escapes me. I know it's like a really long last name, but he's just really, really, really funny the way that he interacts with Sam and Dean. And he's always like being pulled in and he's just like, no, not again. I just want to be left alone. He's got a lot, his delivery is really great. And I just yes. love that he always needs like wings, like, you know, like to figure out like what it is he's got to do. So he's always got like a yeah. bucket of chicken <laughs> with him. He goes through a lot, his, the poor guy. The the boys put him through a lot, but he's he's a trooper. He's a trooper and just very, very fun. A fun, fun character. Mm-hmm. His name is Keith, and I'm not even gonna attempt <laughs> yeah, I know, to like, pronounce Yazer, his Yazer last back name. or something. It's like it's a really long name. Yeah, and it's it's difficult. There's a there's yeah. a, a lot of letters in that. But yeah. yeah, no. I a fan fan of Donatello who, you know, and especially, especially when he when he gets Solace, and he's like, I don't know what is, I don't, I don't know, <laughs> and I, I identify with that. <laughs> I, I do, I do get that. He's, yeah. um, he's good people. Ah, oh, do you know what? This is genuinely making me want to, want to plow on with the seasons now because I'm, I'm still in season six, mm. and I know there's so many good people mm-hmm. to come along. Mm-hmm. So on the, on the back of Donatello, we have Kevin. Mm-hmm. Now, Sandra has put early characterization, but I would argue Kevin was great all the way through. Oh, yeah. Even I just feel like the Kevin. comic, like the comic, comic relief, I feel like was just like on point 
like when you when he's first introduced in season seven, he's so wound up and like such a mm-hmm. like the the characterization of the student that's you know got to be the best at everything, and he's he's scheduled down to like the second, and he's so like not wanting this to happen to him. And again, it's similar to what kind of Donatello, but like a completely different take on it. So I feel like maybe season seven, season eight, um, I, I think things get a little bit more season nine, you know, he's kind of like pushed aside, but yeah, there, he's got a, he's got a lot of great comic relief moments. I think like when Dean goes back into the bunker, I think at the beginning of season nine, he's been like locked up in there and he's like having pooped for like, I don't know, like whatever, whatever he says or whatever, but it's just, yeah. he's, he's got, he's got a great presence. And I think too, like you get the feeling of like younger brother, you know, like, you yeah. know, like the, the younger brother, you kind of just like, don't want to have hanging around, but you got to deal with him anyway. And you got to take care of him kind of situation. I feel like, you know, um, mm-hmm. happening and yeah. Yeah. Osric, yeah. Osric Charles is, is, does, does a really good job with him. Yeah. I would I would also um couple Linda Chan in with that as mm-hmm. well because I yeah. I'm a huge fan of like she's she's a I mean obviously I'm I'm not I'm not um Asian and I mm-hmm. don't have an Asian family I don't come mm-hmm. from a culture anything like that mm-hmm. but you have like a, a, a stereotypical idea mm-hmm. it's you know it's, it's very stereotypical about like Asian I parents think they call and I tiger love... tiger mom I think they call yeah. her tiger mom yeah mm-hmm. and I love the way that she she acts in that same stereotypical manner, but it's so absurd in mm-hmm. the in the situation that they're in, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. And I just I really enjoy that. Yeah, she's a really good. She's she's a good actress. Yeah, she does a good job. Yes, does a really good job. And actually, actually, while we're while we're talking about um just students and things like that, I forget the episode title um where that boy swaps bodies with sam oh swap me i thought it might be swap me yeah just because we don't really ever get to like we get to see sam being a kid mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like it's angsty and stuff and mm-hmm. i just i love i love the scene where he's just rifling through all gary's things and they're shouting at me he's just like leave me alone i just keep going through i just it's I just thought that whole episode is funny I like mm-hmm. that whole episode. I would mm-hmm. love to do the sex with you. That is just a good episode. It's just great. Yeah. And I didn't want to, I don't want to like, well, Jared and Jensen are funny. We know that Sam and mm-hmm. Dean are funny, but just like, just that one episode of him, just like, t- like trying, <laughs> not really trying to fit in as a student, but having student expectations. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Funny. Very good. It just, just that what just that one scene just mm-hmm. leave me alone yeah going through the stuff under gary's bed <laughs> yeah so next down on the list is rufus yeah. and how he brings out bobby's comic relief so yeah. we'll, we'll look at rufus first rufus is great love yeah. it rufus you need to help me bury, bury a body yeah you know he just comes just, in and you just know you're in for you're in for some you're in for some stuff some r- crazy yeah. crazy crazy stuff and i like that I think they did this with Garth too, where I think they mention, like they mention the character by name, I think, you know, before he comes into play. And I like that. And then you get a, you know, yeah. I think the first time Bobby you sends meet them. him. Yeah. Bobby sends them to Rufus in season two to track down Bella. Okay. Season three. Season Am I three. Wrong? Is it season three? Yeah, Bella doesn't show up season until three. season three. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and he's he's a much okay. different yeah. character. I mean, he's still he razzes Dean, but you get you really see how different he is. I think with Bobby, like that they've had that yeah. established relationship for a while, and yeah, I feel like yeah, they rib each other so well that like I I would have loved to have seen more episodes with him and Bobby together. I feel like those were kind of like gold. Yes. I love that they did that one episode where they went back and like paralleled the monster that Sam and Dean were trying to figure out with a case that Bobby had gone back on. He had done with Rufus and they brought Stephen Williams who plays Rufus and um, Jim Beaver back, you know, just for that like episode, every time I get to see Bobby Mm -hmm. again, but then when I got to see Bobby and Rufus, I was like, Oh, this is great. Um, Yeah. They're just really, really, really good together. Yeah. Yeah. Those those actors are are great and so fun. So fun. 
Yeah, and I just I think it was I think like when you say like he he brings out Bobby's comic relief, it's it's someone Bobby's age that he can mm-hmm. relate to. Mm-hmm. So you know, not only can they be these like badass hunters, but they can complain about like creaky knees yeah. and be like grumpy old men. We had yeah. a whole TV show. <laughs> like a whole TV show that was called We had two. We had grumpy old men and grumpy young men. Mm. It was great. Mm-hmm. And I I like that. I like yeah. that. And I like the way he's just like again, I think of Rufus and I think Bobby, you gotta help me bury a body. Mm-hmm. You know, just mm-hmm. fucking apropos of feckin' nothing. Just no 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 no. I yeah. think it might be weekend at Bobby's actually. Yeah, it is. I'm it is. Be, yeah. I think that's also the one where he swallows the ring and then like, oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The most absurd yes. stuff he does in that episode with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's really yeah. Good. it's good. Yeah. And then moving on, we've got Bobby question mark. Because now, I feel I feel like early Bobby might have been more comic relief yes. but still fatherly comic relief you know like that kind of thing um maybe early on mm-hmm. so that's See, just kind of why i put him in there i i consider bobby like main cast mm-hmm. you know i know he's not mm-hmm. but he's like it's like sam and dean and then like Cass and bobby you know they're mm-hmm. kind of like on the yeah. same level for yeah. me but i do and there's as really great as he is to the story, I think he offers a bit of the audience's voice mm-hmm. in the show as well. You mm-hmm. know, when you're like pulling your hair out of the TV going, fucking why? Yeah. There's Bobby there to come along and be like, fucking just, why? Yeah. Yeah. Why are you yeah. doing what you're doing? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, or setting them, and his setting them in his place. Yeah. Yeah. Do I look like a ditchable prom date to you? <laughs> what am I going to do? River dance? <laughs> you know, he's, he's, He's funny in a grumpy old man way, yeah. and I it could could just be because I'm British, but I find that kind of I think it's funny. You know? Yeah, no, I I, I like and, him a lot that way. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I like I like he you know he can be soft to mm-hmm. the boys when they need it, mm-hmm. but he's very you know he's got that tough love kind of thing, and he kind of mm-hmm. tells them how it is without yeah. caring about their feelings yeah in fact i do think that a boohoo princess i'm sorry your feelings are hurt something mm-hmm. like that mm-hmm. yeah yeah but no i would yeah i w- I would say bobby's main cast but also he's funny mm-hmm. he's funny mm-hmm. so we are nearly we are nearly at the, end of the, at the end of the list I'll, so throw got- out, I'll throw out the two that were just like random ones that i put in one was andy he was one of the psychic kids the he mind manipulator the impala yeah yeah yeah, that's I mean, that alone you deserve, you know, that's 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 funny enough in its own right that you were able to do that. But he comes back again towards the end when um all hell breaks loose. And again, he's just he has that funny little interjection of he lightens he lightens the mood of the of both those episodes. And I think that's that's important. The other one was Aaron, who was um Rabbi's grandson who inherited the golem in season eight, which is everybody hates Hitler. Yes. I just love it because of how he flirts with Dean just because he has to <laughs> over the character <laughs> and then kind of like Dean's like oh so we didn't have a moment but <laughs> there was something like that it's just I don't quality. remember that it's I know quality. I know the episode it's it's I don't it's, remember it's that. he's a really good he's a really good actor and luckily they he comes back for like maybe one minute in like an episode seasons later but he never dies so that's that's good. You never Woo! you never see him die. So that's that's a good thing. Yeah. And then the other one I yeah. threw out there, our final one, a character that I really found so funny, had such an arc, evil villain arc, but it was Chuck, um, who I mm. term 1.0, the prophet version. Um, when he yes. comes in at the monster at the end of this book in that episode, hysterical. He's just so funny. And he gets it again in you know, I think parts of season five, um, he comes he comes through again in a couple other episodes. <laughs> the convention. But the convention. He's just he's just a really good, fun character. And again, I think like taking you out, like he he's he's just meta enough that you know you get to kind of how you were talking about some characters, you get to see kind of like be the audience. I feel like Chuck kind of gave us mm-hmm. a little bit of that. Um yeah. in there. And so this is this is early seasons, Chuck. Yeah. This is not, but like, we're, no, I'm talking before, like season four and five, and then after that, yeah, yeah no, 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 before the thing in the bar with Metatron, mm-hmm. before mm-hmm. all that, and certainly before the end, yeah, you know, the character 
said, oh God, I put you through so much yeah. crap. Yeah. <laughs> oh God, you live through bugs. Yeah. You know, yeah. That guy who yeah. traits around in a in a dressing gown and his underwear. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I will say though, it is genuinely a testament to Rob Benedict's mm-hmm. acting. Yeah. That he went from, you know, fumbling idiot Chuck to you believed yeah. the power by mm-hmm. the end of it. So I'm mm-hmm. like, yeah, you know, fair play. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's out of fucking jump. <laughs> Mm-hmm. It's a bloody jump. Yeah. But yeah, no, I would. I would agree with that. I would agree with that. Do you have like a, a favorite? I'm going to put you on the spot. I'm sorry. Mm. Do you have like a, a, a favorite comedic episode that you're like, always this one? <sighs> Mystery Spot. <laughs> um, I do really love Mystery Spot. Mystery Spot and the other one that you don't like. Which one? Do I, uh, fan, fan fiction. Fan fiction. Ugh. Um. There's no singing in yellow, Supernatural. Yellow Fever. I think Yellow Fever. Uh-huh. Those are that's one probably like I, I try not to watch them out of sequence, but like sometimes I just I've gotta have a jolt of something. And it's usually it could be mystery spot or yeah. it could be yellow fever. I think yellow fever probably a little bit more because it's not as dark towards the I mean, it's still dark, but it's not as dark towards the end with the turn that Sam takes. So I think yeah. yellow fever. And because then you get the you get the blooper that they added at the actual end of the episode, which is that's which is not awesome. a blooper. That's a performance. But still, that's it's not, not something that was meant to be like you know in the um no. in the show. So yeah, that's no, that's a classic. I, I think, think comedy gold I, I would, right there. Yes, I would also go with. I would go with swap meat or yellow <laughs> beaver. Okay, um, swap meat because I just I just love the. I just, it's just something, something about putting Sam in that situation Mm -hmm. because he was a really studious kid who, Mm -hmm. you know, he behaved probably quite a lot like Gary was expected to behave. And it's really, I just think it's really good to see him be like, oh, fuck this. Yeah. And of course, then you've, you've got Gary. I would love to have the sex with you and (laughs) drinking and having a burger and stuff like that. But yellow yellow fever for me because that is Jensen acting a fool mm-hmm. while Jared tries to stay in character for forty minutes. Yeah, and I also like it. Tall Tales too. I think that's one I could watch because I think that's that's a really fun one because that really gives you the first your first indication that's, that's of the, the kind of crazy one, stuff. Yeah, yeah. That um. Yeah. That. Oh God! When they're fighting and they fall off the bed, and you see, yeah. <laughs> you see Jared and Jensen's face before they yeah. fall. I mean, it's there's so yeah, many no, really good ones. Like, I like I, I, whenever, whenever I want to just laugh, like you know, I'll just put something like. And Ted really loves changing channels, so we'll watch. You know, sometimes I'll be like, "Well, let's just watch something funny, supernatural," and then I'll just, I'll just put yeah. that on for him. And you know, and I, I mean, I love that that one too, but. He really likes that one a lot. Well, next, really you fun. should you should show him. You should show him Jared and Jensen talking about what if it just bends a little. I've I probably got the link somewhere. He's. I think I've probably shown him that, like the convention stuff and stuff. I think I have. But I think you I've, should. Yeah. You should show him. You should show him that, and then watch the episode directly after, and be like, "What if it just bends a mm-hmm, little?" Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. I'm sure I remember. I'm sure I remember hearing or something. Jared didn't actually wear any kind of protection mm. in case it just bent a little. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if that's true or not, but um, fair play to him, <laughs> to be fair, because he wouldn't get me to stand in something like that and without going, excuse uh, me, I would like, please give me something. Yeah. My testicles. I, no, <laughs> give me, I need, you know? <laughs> but um, yeah. Oh, gosh. Uh, yeah, episode. well, this was Let fun. Us know. This was a fun, fun this was great. call. Yeah. And hopefully, hopefully we've we've lightened the mood a little bit after our last few very serious yeah. episodes. But let us know who your favorite comic relief characters are, if you've got a favorite, like, funny episode. Yeah, we did should, we miss we anybody? Do episodes. Yeah, did we miss yeah. anybody? I'm trying, to, I'm trying to think. We might have. I'm trying yeah. to think. See, a lot of my funnies come from bloopers. Because mm-hmm. they're, they're, they're my favorite part of yeah, and they're my favorite part of finishing a season, and I'm like, oh, it's gag real time. <laughs> oh. I'm fucking... oh, it's knowing, it's having listened to, um, the the con stories. Like, I was talking to Dreamer 
um, in some comments about donkeys and she was asking if I was going to do anything with Mark of Cain and I'm like no mm-hmm. I was like no I'm hand waving it I don't want to I'm not bringing all that nonsense in I didn't particularly like the Mark of Cain storyline and she was just saying that like that was one of the things of fic and you know it's fine in the show and I was like yeah you won't see me write a code of bugs either mm-hmm. and she's like I don't remember that what is that so I was telling her <laughs> about it and I, I hate I think everybody unanimously is like oh man bugs sucks but I was telling her the Jensen story of getting stung like on his ass mm. before they before they called action and having mm-hmm. to be like wait and you know <laughs> so a lot of my enjoyment of these episodes comes from the behind the scenes yeah it comes yeah. from watching yellow fever knowing that not only did Jared leave the fucking scene <laughs> he left the whole set and he wouldn't you know just yeah. completely left yeah. And I always think that's really funny because I'm like, do you know what a 150 pound python doesn't give a fuck about? <laughs> you. You are too big to be food, mm-hmm. but not big enough to be dangerous. They don't, yeah. they don't care. Yeah. And the way they're both like Jared completely left and Jensen was frozen in terror. Skies. Uh... It's a noodle. <laughs> it's noodle. It's cute. It's <sighs> But yeah, so readers, listeners, I'm copying that. <laughs> readers, listeners, watchers, anybody, how are you engaged with us? Let us know your favorite comic relief characters. Did we miss anybody? Um, do you have anything to add to any of the things we said? You know, what's your favorite scene? Do you have like a, a favorite go to funny episode? Let us know. Leave us a comment, reach out to us on Twitter, anything you like. And with that, we will we'll wrap it up. Yeah. So if you want to reach out to us, you can email us at idlinginthimpala at gmail.com or reach out to us on Twitter at idling in the letter D Impala. If you'd like to make your voice a mail, check the description for a link to send us a voice message. You can find links to our personal socials and our AO3 accounts in the description. And there's also a link to my author website and my original fiction. Woo! Authors, websites, socials. <laughs> Don't forget to um, like, subscribe, follow especially if you're watching this on youtube drop a like on the video they really help us with the algorithm and things like that this is our life now we have to we have to bow <laughs> to the algorithm gods of youtube so you know if you're not subscribed subscribe do do the things and leave us a comment we'll you know we'll, we'll always answer them we'll always come and talk to you so leave us a comment as well also in the description you will find the current causes that we are championing at the moment take a look at them if you are able and you want to you know please reach out off help donation and anything like that they are causes that are important to us and with that we will say thank you for joining us in the back seat and we will see you next time guys bye bye bye